In this video, we're going to introduce Newton's method. What is Newton's method? It's a method for finding approximate zeros of nonlinear differentiable functions. So if you have a function, you're trying to find its zero. Remember, that's the x value where f of x equals zero. It can be impossible to do it by just using algebra. So we can get an approximation using this method. But also, since you can write an equation so that it looks like a function equaling zero, it's going to help us find approximate solutions to nonlinear equations. Many of these equations which have no closed form solution, meaning that there's no way you can solve them just using algebra. So what's the basic idea? Well, we'd like to find a solution, a zero of f of x. So we want to solve f of x equals zero. So we need an initial approximation or an initial guess, x sub one. If we can get any clue as to where that zero could be, the closer we are to that zero, uh, then the better this method is going to work. So then what we do is instead of solving f of x equals zero, which is too hard, we look at its, its linearization. Remember the linearization is also called the tangent line approximation. So what we're going to do is find the equation of the tangent line at our first point, x sub one. And then we're going to find the x-intercept. Where does that tangent line equal zero in its y-coordinate? And whatever that x-intercept is, we're gonna call that solution x sub two. Now remember that the linearization or the tangent line approximation is a good approximation of the function when you are close to the point of tangency. So if we had a good initial guess, then we would expect that the uh, x-intercept of the tangent line would be close to the x-intercept of the function. But that's not usually the case. Um, if it is, we can go ahead and stop. Otherwise, we're going to repeat the process. We're going to say, OK, now at x2, let's go back to the graph, find the equation of the line tangent to the graph at that point. That's another linearization. And let's find out where that tangent line hits the x-axis. And we'll call that our x sub 3. And we just repeat this process until we get either a good enough solution or, well, we're going to see later on that sometimes Newton's method does not work. But usually it does, and eventually we're going to get a solution which is acceptable. We have to bear in mind that it's always an approximate solution. Let's take a look at a picture of what's going on here. We've got a function. And you know, if we had the graph, we would know the answer. But we, have, we don't know, have the graph. We don't know uh, what the zero is of this function. That is, at what x value does it cross the uh, x-axis? So we're going to start with an initial approximation or initial guess, which is x sub 1. Z, and I'm taking that to be 0 0.5. So I'm going to go down to where that uh, meets the graph of the function. So where on the graph of the function do we have an x coordinate of x sub 1? And draw its tangent line. And then I'm going to look for the x-intercept of the tangent line. Now in this case it's not really very close uh, to my 
uh, x intercept of the original function. But let's just remember uh, a little bit about the equation of this uh, linearization or tangent line approximation. At the point of tangency, the x coordinate is x sub 1. The y coordinate is the function value at x sub 1. So if I just go to my point slope form of the equation of a line, uh, then I can say, oh, okay, well, this is my x sub 1 and y sub 1. And my slope is the derivative evaluated at x sub 1. And from that, I'm going to get my equation of the tangent line being L of x, or L sub 1 of x, equals F evaluated at x sub 1 plus F prime evaluated at x sub 1 times, in parentheses, x minus x sub 1. So I'm going to have to do a, another step. So I'm going to call this point, which looks to be about 1.4. That's going to be my x sub 2. And now let me go up and see where on the graph do I have a point with x coordinate x sub 2 and draw another tangent line at that point. So now here I can see that, oh, the x-intercept of this tangent line is getting closer to the x-intercept of my original function. But if I look at the value of the function at that new x-intercept, so that's going to be my x sub 3, I'd still, you know, not very small. So I'm going to use that x sub 3 to go back up to the graph and draw one more tangent line. And at this point, I can see that the x-intercept of that tangent line is very close to the x-intercept of the function. So I will stop there. So to review, we started with our initial approximation, x sub 1. We found the linearization of the function at x sub 1 and set that equal to 0. That means I found the uh, x-intercept of that tangent line. That gave me a, another x value, another uh, approximate solution, which was not very good. So I repeated the process. I found its linearization, the linearization of the function at x sub 2, and drew its tangent line, found its x-intercept. That was better, but I wanted to get even closer. And so at the, that x-intercept, which we called x sub 3, we do our last uh, tangent line approximation. And that would give me my final approximation, which would be x sub 4. So what's the basic algorithm? What are the basic steps that we need to take in order to solve uh, an equation or find the zero of uh, a, a nonlinear function? Well, to derive the algorithm, we're going to look at the linearization and how do we find the x-intercept of that tangent line. So here I have the equation of the tangent line, and I want to know for what, for what x value will the y value equal 0. So I'll set that equal to 0 and go through the algebra. I'll start by subtracting f of x sub 1 from each side. Then divide both sides by f prime evaluated at x sub 1. That gives me x minus x1, or x sub 1, equals negative f of x sub 1 over f prime of x sub 1. Or the x-coordinate of my x-intercept would be 
x sub 1 minus f evaluated at x sub 1 over f prime of x sub 1. And remember, we said that we would call the solution to l sub 1 of x equals 0 x sub 2. And so it doesn't matter whether I started with x sub 1 and was trying to find x sub 2, or if I started with x sub 4 and was trying to find x sub 5, I would follow these same steps. So given my initial guess x sub 1, now I've got a formula for n equals 2, 3, 4, until I'm ready to stop. My next guess is going to be my previous guess. I guess I should not call them guesses. They're approximations. My next approximation is going to be the previous approximation minus the ratio of the function value at the previous approximation over the derivative value at the previous approximation. And when I'm satisfied that the I've got a good enough approximation, meaning that my f of x sub n is close enough to zero, I'll stop. So here's an example. We're going to try to solve this equation, which uh, really there's no algebraic way of solving this. Uh, I have x squared plus 1 in parentheses raised to the 1 third power equals 10 cosine of x over 4. So I'm going to take this equation and I have to have one side equal to 0. So I'll subtract the 10 cosine of x over 4 from both sides. So the side that's not 0, that's going to give me the formula for my function value. So finding the 0, or a 0, of this function is equivalent to solving this equation, which is equivalent to solving the original equation. So I need to take the derivative. I've got to be careful uh, in both of those terms. I'm going to have to apply the uh, chain rule, the derivative of the inside uh, in the first term is x, is the inside is x squared plus 1, its derivative is 2x. Now the inside of the cosine function is x over 4, its derivative is 1 fourth, and just remember that x over 4 is the same as 1 fourth times x. So that may help us uh, see how we get the 1 fourth as the derivative of the inside. So I'm going to rewrite that f prime of x equals 2x over 3 in parentheses x squared plus 1 raised to the power of 2 thirds plus 5 halves times sine of x over 4. And I am going to choose x1 to equal 10 and evaluate the function and the derivative when x equals 10. Now, a bit of warning here. If you are, uh, when you, not if, but you're definitely going to be using a calculator. And if you're evaluating a trig function, sine, cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, cotangent, make sure your calculator is in radians mode. All of our functions, trig functions, all of their derivatives are all coming from using radians as the input to the functions. All right, so I get these two values for f of x1 and f prime of x1. And now I put them into my formula. I'm going to take x sub 1 minus f of x1 over f prime of x1. And I get my new value for x sub 2. So 
So now I've got x sub 2 is 2.97592. When you're working with these, it's good to have five or six decimal places, maybe even seven or eight. Well, let's check. Mm, f of x2, not very close to zero. So we're going to have to take another step. f of x2 is negative 5.21374. Four. And then we find the derivative at that value and go back to our formula. I'll take my x2, I'll subtract the ratio of f of x2 over f prime of x2, which I calculated above here, and I get my x3 value. Now, f of x3 is still not very close to zero. It is 1. 0 0.00669. And so that's not where we would want to be. So let's calculate the value of the derivative and go ahead and find our x sub 4. So my x sub 4 is going to be 5.07214. How about f of x4? Is that very close to zero? f of x4 is better. And in fact, I may want to stop here, depending upon how much, uh, how close I want to be to uh, my actual solution. And so this looks like a pretty good approximation already for a zero, but I may want to do better. So let's go ahead and evaluate uh, the derivative at x sub 4 and get a new uh, value, which we'll call x sub 5 from our formula. Now, you know, again, there's two ways that we can determine that we must be getting close to a uh, zero or approximate zero of the function. Uh, the first way is that, obviously, if the function value itself is close to zero, that's good. But another way we can look is we can look at our subsequent approximations. Here I had 5.07. Now I have 5.07 if I round it. So this is 5.072. Here I have 5.069. x sub 5 is very close to x sub 4. So that's a good hint that I must be getting closer and closer to the uh, approximate 0. And in fact, if I look at f of x sub 5, it is very close to uh, 0. So it's 7.5 times 10 to the minus 7. So we're definitely going to stop there. And we will say that an approximate solution is to our original equation, our approximate solution is 5.06915. Five. So I'm going to stop here. I'm going to make a subsequent video and talk about, well, what are some of the problems with Newton's method? Um, it doesn't always work. It's not guaranteed to find a solution. So in another video, we'll talk about some of the problems that can occur with Newton's method.